Can't stop, won't stop. This video today is brought to you by Squarespace, and I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit more about why I love Squarespace, and I have been using it for years to host my website a little bit later on in this episode. Good morning from Pittsburgh, everybody. Jesse's working from the Airbnb today, so I'm gonna be walking around and sightseeing, hitting some antique stores, and I just got myself a yummy sun-dried tomato and a rosemary scone, so that should be interesting. So I'll take you along with me today. I have a whole list of places I want to visit today and I decided to start with this antique store because it's just a couple minutes away from our Airbnb and I thought it would be a beautiful place to start off the day and get inspired. And boy, was I right. This place is incredible. As soon as I walked in the door, I saw the most amazing C. Jerry sculpture I've ever seen in my entire life. I had never even seen this horse sculpture online on any of my mid-century forums that I follow. So I was very excited to get to see it in person. They had $2,800 on it. And when I looked online, the ones online were selling for six to $10,000. This thing is no joke. It is almost a life-size horse sculpture. Can you imagine the beautiful home that this is gonna end up in someday? This is such a beautiful sculpture. I've never come across this one either. It's got a mother holding her child. Let's see what they have on the tag. It says mid-century modern bust, mother and child, 1960s, and they've got it for $6.95. Now this piece over here I am familiar with. This is a Donald Drum piece, and this artist makes horse sculptures too. So I'm gonna pop in a couple pictures of different horse ones. Those are actually the ones I've been keeping an eye out for. I've never come across this rooster one, but I really hope someday I find one of the horse pieces. This light shade is really fascinating. It has that Art Deco stacked look, but instead of just ridges, it actually has human figures on it. The tag says artist signed and dated 850. This antique store is already fully impressing me. It is packed with things I've never seen before. They have some of the most incredible, magnificent lighting fixtures here. This one, of course, is much more my style. It's a 1960s Oscar Torlasco piece, and they are asking 7,200, and I am not surprised because these things sell online for thousands and thousands of dollars. They are very, very rare and hard to find, and this one is in pristine condition. I love the way that the arms have like spider legs, even though I'm scared of spiders. I love the spider leg look on these. They are just magnificent lighting fixtures. They have some of the best mid-century vendors I have ever seen. I'm pretty surprised. I didn't know there'd be such good mid-century here in Pittsburgh. Look at this black and white striped lighting fixture up there. I can imagine that in the most amazing home. The yellow one's wild too. This is a giant Fantoni piece. It's probably over two feet tall and the colors on it are so classic mid-century with the orange and brown drippy glaze. Who knew that Pittsburgh had such good mid-century modern?
Here's another Fantoni piece over here. This one's the lion, and I think I might need to add this to my bucket list of things I want to find. They've got $850 on it, and I'm pretty sure these are incredibly rare. So now that I have all of my Lisa Larsons that I've been looking for, except for the fox, I think maybe I'm gonna have to add this to my bucket list dream finds. I think we are starting to see a real comeback in quirky, large-scale sculptures and things that are just a little bit more colorful and playful. I've been seeing a lot of these things selling in the Portland area lately. This guy is hilarious. He's from the 1960s, and he's made out of paper mache. I'm always down for something a little bit quirky and weird. This store has three or four different large rooms and each room is a little bit different. This one here in the back area has a lot of vintage clothing. Here's a beautiful hand beaded antique bag for $60. The colors on this one are fun because I feel like a lot of times you see pinks and purples and pastels. This one's really vibrant and colorful. Embroidery is one of my biggest weaknesses. This piece is incredible. Look at all of this hand needlework. It's got such great coloring on it, and I'm really surprised to find it in such good condition. A lot of times when I come across dresses or jackets like this, a lot of the needlework is snagged. It's $110, which for me is a lot to spend on a coat. You guys know that I'm always thrifting them for $10 or $15, but this is such a beautiful work of art and it's in such good shape. So I decided to take a picture of me in it and post it on Instagram and I did a poll and overwhelmingly you said to get the coat so I did. It's so funny, I have found these Blanco Owl bookends before, but I've never found them in the pair. I found them several times singles, but never a pair. I know exactly what this table is because I own two of them. I took them to the Rose City Vintage Market last fall and I cannot believe it, but neither of them sold. These are 1960s tables from the designer Milo Bauman. And as many of you already know, he is one of my favorite designers from that era. I am loving the shape on this chair right here. Everything curved is coming back. So keep an eye out for curved pieces because they are selling like hotcakes. This horse lamp over here is really cool because it has a very Greek look to it. This is actually not a mid-century era piece. It is by the designer Jonathan Adler and it is a modern day piece. He has taken a lot of inspiration from the mid-century era, kind of copied it, but he's copied it well. We all pull inspiration from somewhere. Obviously, I love animals. That's not a secret. And that's one of the reasons that I love pieces that were made in the 60s and 70s, because so many of them revolved around animal figurines on them. This is a mid-century floor lamp by Rembrandt. I am learning so much at this store today. It's been so fun to be able to see pieces I've never come across before. This is how you learn, kids. I just saw this exact same lamp at that incredible antique store in Pittsburgh and I had never even seen one before online. This one's 325 and it works. How cool if someone could come and get both of them and have yourself a pair. How incredible was that store, you guys? Those are some of my very favorite places to go into and visit and spend some time because it is so unbelievably curated. And I know that means that the pricing can be top market value, but there's a reason for it. They have been collecting and investing and researching in some true authentic antiques and the way that they have it displayed beautifully just makes it feel like you were going into a museum 
Um, there was one section that really reminded me of the PT Palace in Florence, Italy, the way that it had the wallpaper and the art on the wall. So it's a very cool experience and don't take those opportunities for granted because you can learn so much about designer pieces all in one spot. And I even found a treasure that I will probably be keeping for the rest of my life. So I paid $110 for it. And I think that that was actually a really good deal because I could go to a hundred estate sales and never find a piece that beautiful in perfect condition that fits me great. Mary Lee was so wonderful and helped me out in there. And she told me that I'm going to love La Mix. So we're going to head there now because almost the entire store is mid-century modern. <laughs> This starburst clock is almost identical to the one that our realtors gave us for our housewarming gift with our new home. The only difference is it has these little circles all around it. It goes so well in our basement right now and we have it there with our Batosi bowl on display. And I thought that I had a large collection of these candle holders. How amazing is this? I've been on a dry spell lately. It's been over six months since I found one at a thrift store. But if you live in Pittsburgh, now you know where to get them. One thing I have learned in almost a decade of being a vintage reseller is that you will never know everything. There is so much to learn, especially with jewelry. I feel like I have been researching and researching pieces and I still have so much I need to learn. And this is probably the best way to learn things. If you are wanting to become a reseller, you've got to get out here in the stores. You've got to touch pieces and you're going to start to get a feel for what's rare, what's incredible and when you should splurge and not walk away from a piece. A beautiful piece of vintage is always a good investment if you know what the value of it is. One of my favorite reasons that I love estate sales is you can actually find things in the original packaging. It's not something you find very often at the thrift stores, but if you go to an estate sale or if you buy from a vintage shop where they found it at an estate sale, you're a lot more likely to get the original packaging, which I think is just kind of fun. Okay, you've got to hear me out on this. When I first spotted this, I thought that these were fondue forks. And it turns out they are bag dryers, which is so brilliant. So if you have plastic bags and you're wanting to reuse them, you give them a wash and you can lay it over these little pokey things while it dries. I still feel like this could have so many other potential uses. You could hang this on the wall, maybe turn it into something kind of sculptural. And what if you were to use this as a ring holder? I wonder if you could get the rings over these top balls right here. Well, let's just test it out and see. It looks like they fit over it just fine. Imagine how many rings you could stack all the way up there. The only problem is the ring kind of just flops around, so it doesn't really display how beautiful the ring is. Not my best idea, but hey, I always love to try to think outside the box. I might be the only mid-century modern lover that I know of that is not a big fan of Bakelite. I don't know why, but it's not a problem because whenever I do see it for a really good deal, I can pick it up for other resellers that I know. I am slowly working on building up my own personal teak collection. I have everything from a tortilla holder to goblets. I've got quite a bit that I've collected over the last couple years. One thing surprisingly I don't have are little serving dishes like this with the spoons in them. They're only $15, but I feel like this is something that I can find again back at home. So I'm gonna pass on these but I am gonna grab these three bowls. I think these would work really well for using as larger prep bowls. I've been picking up a lot of small mix and match bowls for my future cooking vlogs that I'm gonna do. And I think that these are a really good size and I love the design. And I know they're not gonna break on the way home.
Well, a mix was my cup of tea. I love going into mid-century stores that have primarily mid-century era pieces. And the owner, David, owns everything in that entire store, which is really neat because you know that he's probably been collecting his entire life. Unfortunately, he was getting his hair cut, so I didn't get a chance to meet him. But I did find those three bowls from Sweden, and those are going to be perfect for when I start launching some of my cooking episodes. I think those bowls are going to be great for rice because I never can fit them in the small ones that I have at home. So now we're gonna do some real thrifting and we're gonna hit, I think, three or four different Goodwills and the red, white, and blue thrift stores. My Pennsylvania people have told me that the Goodwills here are really good, so I've got my hopes up. Let's see what we can find. Well, we all knew that it was going to be impossible for me to make it throughout an entire day thrifting without buying a hat. I'm surprised it took me this long, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if this is even vintage, and I know it's not valuable, but I love the color, and for $2.99, I'm going to grab it. So far, I am seeing really full shelves, lots of smalls, which are the things that I'm looking for so I can bring them home in my luggage. The pricing is great, but I am just not finding anything that's my style. All right, I guess we're leaving this first Goodwill with just the blue hat. I have been a huge fan of Squarespace ever since 2014 when I very first launched my website, leftcoastrevivals.com. When I very first launched my first online vintage store back in 2012, I did it on a different platform. And one of the things that took me forever to do was to hand type in every single address that I was shipping to. And if you're a vintage reseller, you know how long that takes when you have a big launch and you drop all of your vintage once a month. So when I made the switch over to Squarespace and I realized that they offered extensions that connected me directly with my third party shipping company, it was a game changer. I was now only spending minutes on printing shipping labels versus hours that I was spending before. Having access to all of these extensions can help you manage your inventory, promote your products, streamline bookkeeping, and help you ship items all across the world. Another cool feature that Squarespace offers are the member areas. This is a great tool if you want to have an exclusive area for your members only. And this is so cool because you will be able to offer specific content and specific newsletters and any other information you want to get to those members. And it only goes out to the people that pay for that subscription. So it's an additional source of revenue and it's also an additional way for you to connect with your followers. Visit squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash left coast for 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Now we are at King's Thrift and this place looks really big. Let me flip the camera around and I'll show you the whole building. And I just saw a person walk out with an entire cart full of things and it looked like there was some good stuff peeking out the top. So I'm kind of hopeful this is going to be a good one. Ooh, there's one shopping cart left just for me. I almost ran across the room thinking that this was a Bennett Welsh piece of pottery. It didn't have the stamp I was looking for and the glaze wasn't quite right. It looks like someone's been using it as a planter because it's pretty dirty. I personally love to use these as crocks and put all my wooden spoons in them.
This is a beautiful wool sweater jacket made in Ecuador, and all of their tops are only $5.75. It's so soft, and it's got these adorable critters on it. It looks like it has all of the buttons, and I think that this would look so great layered with a pair of jeans in winter. For $5.75, I'm going to grab it. It's the only thing I'm getting here, so now we're headed to Goodwill. If I was back home, I would be grabbing both of these lamps for sure. I'm seeing these lamps all over the high-end websites with the large cone-shaped lampshades. Right now, the current trend is all about shape and texture. And they go for hundreds online. You can have the lamp and a lampshade for under 10 bucks at a thrift store. But you do have to weed through some lacy stuff like this. It's amazing how if you just go to the thrift stores and you look for secondhand pieces, you'll realize that most current design is almost always copied off of vintage. Well, I need to be over here looking for smalls since I can't bring home any lamps in my luggage. One of the things I'm always looking for are non-breakables like brass candle holders. These candle holders I do find pretty often back at home. It is nice that there's an entire set. They're $2.99 each and for that price I'm going to pass and hopefully somebody local will find them. Today I'm really on the hunt for something that just wows me. It doesn't have to be incredibly valuable. I just want it to be something that gets me really excited. And here's some more brass candle holders. I'm not that excited. I need something that excites me. You guys, it just started pouring and there's supposed to be a thunderstorm. And I typically do not wear hats until I get them home and I get them cleaned up. But I need that hat that I just got. And I found a lookout that overlooks the entire city by accident because I took a wrong turn. So I'm gonna put that hat on. I'll inspect it for bugs first. And then we're gonna go see if we can see the city skyline through the rain and clouds and maybe we'll hear some thunder. Look at the view, you guys. It's so beautiful. I love when mistakes turn out to be the right thing. I think I should have grabbed the jacket too. My top is silk and it's getting soaked, but it'll dry. <laughs> All right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a day here. I am soaking wet. I look, re I just saw so much lightning. <gasps> I just saw literally the biggest lightning bolt strike, like the ones you see in the movies in the sky. And you can probably tell that we don't get a ton of lightning in Portland, Oregon, even though it rains all the time. So I'm sitting here trying to see if I can capture it again. But of course, lightning never strikes twice in the same place, right? Not gonna happen. I wish you could have seen it. Can't stop, won't stop. I'm here at my first red, white, and blue thrift store. And I wanted to say a special thank you to all of my Pittsburgh friends who gave this suggestion to me. Apparently there are a handful of them in the area and I'm excited to see what this place is all about. And hopefully I have time to hit the next one before they close too. Also, I have to acknowledge, I look ridiculous with the blue on blue on blue. I thought it worked before when it had the blue top with the blue necklace and a couple blue rings. I feel like I'm in a full on costume right now with the blue hat too. It is my favorite color, but I think this is taking it a little bit too far. <laughs> One of my main goals on this entire trip has been to bring home as much amazing vintage jewelry as I possibly can. 
The beauty of looking for jewelry is that it's easy to carry with you on the airplane. And if you get lucky and you find really good stuff, it has great margins. And the main reason why I love to buy jewelry is because I love jewelry. And I think it's always more fun when you're shopping for something that you love. One of my pro tips that I give is that when you are traveling, pack light, bring one suitcase that has just all of your essentials. And then if you do find a lot of really great items that you want to take home with you, you can go to the thrift store, buy another suitcase, and then you're only having to pay the extra baggage fee one way. And most of the time it comes in cheaper than shipping a giant box home. I don't plan on getting a lot of pottery. I'm trying to limit the amount of breakables since I know I'm gonna be bringing home a lot of brass items, but it's really pretty and it's only $1.99 and I'm just going to get it because I think it's really pretty and I love it. It's always interesting thrifting in a new place because I know my hometown and I know what I'm good at finding in that specific area, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna find here in Pittsburgh. And I think this piece right here might just be my find of the day. It's a real painting. It's got a signature there and on the back, it has the artist information. So like all good resellers, I put down my phone and I Googled the artist's name. And guess what? Not only is this an incredibly valuable piece, but it's a local Pennsylvania artist. That to me is the coolest souvenir to take home. This is a piece that I don't plan on selling. We're gonna put it in our home. We're working on collecting as much mid-century art as we can. And it is so cool that we found something that was from a local artist. So this is officially going to be my Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania souvenir. I seem to have a really hard time finding full sets of gold tone silverware. So I'm really excited about this. It looks like it has the majority of a set. It might be missing a couple forks, but there seems to be a good amount in here. And it's only $9.99 for the entire set. One of my favorite things to decorate is a table setting and these will be really fun to decorate with. And the best part is they are dishwasher safe. This would make such a pretty soap dish or butter tray. It's $2.99, but it does have a large chip on it. So not gonna get it. Not gonna bring home any glassware with me today, but these are really pretty. And the gold is actually still intact, which is always hard to find because so many people wash it off. And they're only a buck a piece. Thank you, Pittsburgh friends, for sending me to these thrift stores. They are so much better than Goodwill. I'm seeing a lot of vintage, and even though I'm not taking home a lot of this stuff, it still does make thrifting more exciting when you come across things that are actually cool and valuable. These vintage bedspreads are so beautiful. I have two of them in a cream color and a white color, and I use them all the time. I was in line ready to check out when I spotted this wool sweater on the back wall. Look at the pattern and the colors on this. I'm gonna add that to the pile. While I was in line, I did even more research on the local artist, Ned Wirt, and I'm so excited to have one of his pieces. They appear to be very valuable and it was the perfect way to end a wild and fun day. 
Thank you so much for joining me on our Pittsburgh adventures. It was such a wonderful trip and we were hitting the road the next day to head straight to Ohio. And in case you missed it, the two Ohio vlogs are already out and I will link them in the description below. I can't wait to hit the road and take you on the next adventure. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you want to shop my vintage finds, I list my brand new vintage the first Friday of every single month on my website, leftcoastrevivals.com. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at leftcoastrevivals. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I know it's cheesy, but it helps my channel a lot and I am super grateful for all the support. I will see you guys in a brand new adventure next week.